I will also post the slide deck online. I know I emailed it out. Um, uh, but there have been some modifications and I'll cover those as as we go through the thing as uh, through the slides. <clears throat> All right, um, I'd like to welcome everyone to what is our 12th annual sculling championship at Sarasota. Um, the focus, obviously, for most of our regattas is safety and fairness. Um, I am the regatta director, Bryce Crossley, so I will be working registration in regatta headquarters. You'll find me on the third floor of the tower. Uh, Sarah is the Benderson event manager, um, but I understand today is her birthday, so she's not on this call. <clears throat> and then I saw that we had Joe on this, uh, Joe Rivario um, on this call. He's our chief referee and his deputy will be June Harper. Uh, we'll go through a quick agenda. Um, key items to keep in mind of. Um, I mean, this is pretty much the same most years. Uh, Friday, uh, Sarah and her team are expecting trailers to arrive between uh, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. If you're going to be outside this window, please contact her um, so that we can be organized. We do have 45 teams coming. And I imagine most will be on trailers, so we need to make sure um, we get those parked properly. Uh, of keynote, uh, once trailers are parked, they are re they will remain in place until after the last race on Saturday is completed. Um, this is a safety issue because we've had incidents in past years of teams trying to leave early and running over other people and equipment. Seriously, that has happened. <laughs> So again, priority is safety. Uh, registration will be two to six on the third floor uh, as usual. Um, if you are not planning to be there on Friday, please send a representative of some sort because I don't want you to have a delay on Saturday during racing because you are not at registration on Friday. Um, scratches, um, our policy for the last couple of years is to please report it at least one hour prior to the race time to avoid a scratch fee. And you need to report it to the tower, not control commission, but to the tower because we need to let everybody know. Um, so that's important. One hour. Our practice session is planned uh, from 1 to 6 p.m. on Friday. Um, yeah, we from what I can tell on our signups, we have marshals all lined up, so there shouldn't be an issue on getting people out on time. Our launch docks will close at 5.15, allowing 45 minutes for the last of the boats to get off the water by 6 p.m. Um, if you try to launch prior uh, to 1 o'clock or when we don't have marshals on the water, uh, etc., your team will be assessed a penalty to all your entries. First warning, two warnings, and you are uh, removed from that particular race. Tents, um, same rules that Benderson's had in place for a while. Uh, no tents or beach umbrellas on the beach itself. Teams are limited, limited to two 10 by 10 tents. That does not mean one 10 by 20 tents. Um, uh, they will ask you to take it down. Um, many of you have already ordered your tents, so you'll need to contact Benderson. That will point you, Sarah and her team will point you to your rental if you've got it pre-rented. Um, some of the changes that have occurred in the last couple of days, discussions between the FSRA board and uh, the Benderson people, Parking will now be $10 on Friday, uh, $15 on Saturday and Sunday. Upon arrival on Friday, each tow vehicle, whether it's a, a hospitality trailer or a boat trailer, will receive one parking pass upon entry. Um, uh, 
Um, each team will receive two parking passes in the registration package. Um, and then each regatta committee, which is the board and the five regional reps, will also receive one additional parking pass. Buses are to stay parked in the island drop off loop. Um, several have asked about handicap parking. There's also handicap parking on this loop. There are eight handicap slots. Car toppers. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody is bringing their singles on top of their car. You will have to offload your boat, um, put it into the infield where all the other boat general boat storage is, and then you will park in the general parking area. Um, it's going to turn on your camera. Um, a keynote, and this hasn't changed for the last several years. Um, hospitality trailers, etc., need to be set up. Get there's the stuff set up on Friday because there is no pulling in of hospitality vehicles Saturday or Sunday into the team tent area. If you need to resupply or do su supply runs, be sure to bring some sort of cart so you can walk it in. Um, tow vehicles is a little bit different this year. Uh, we will allow tow vehicles to park in front of their boat trailers, but you will not be allowed in after 7 a.m. and you must replace stay in place until the last races are done. Um, again, this is a safety issue that we don't want teams, vehicles driving over, running into people or driving over equipment. <clears throat> Weigh-ins, um, as usual, we'll have the test scale available from 2 to 5 p.m. at the base of the tower. Um, more than welcome to bring there. I believe we are going to have our um, test weights there, so you, if you need to make sure that your scale is is calibrated, those might uh, should be available. I'm not sure if we'll have them there Friday. We'll definitely have them there Saturday. The official weigh-in window is from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the base of the tower. You must show up in your uniform. Um, no stripping down because that'll get you immediately disqualified uh, as a rower. Um, wristbands are for both days. You get one wristband. It's good for both days of racing. If you get damaged or whatever, bring the old one to get a replacement. Um, if you miss the Way in window. In other words, if you show up at 9 30 or 10 o'clock, um, you're going to be excluded from the event. You need to make the way in window. Um, and also, you need to make weight within the window. We do not do exhibition of entries um, at our championships. If you need to make a substitution, especially, uh, this primarily deals with a substitution where your, uh, your rower has. Uh, a different event on their credential than the one they're substituting. I know some of you have alternates that are alternates for multiple events, which is fine. But if they don't have the correct event on the credential, um, you need to contact me on the third floor so we can get that taken care of. Um, third floor also for anybody who decides to lose their credential. I know a lot of coaches don't hand them out on Friday because they don't want them to disappear Saturday morning. So um, just best practice there if you trust your kids. Um, payment can be cash or credit card for those. Awards, we are not doing the awards doc uh, this year, so it'll be the same as last year where we'll have an awards table set up at the base of the tower. As soon as your race is marked official, you're more than welcome to collect the trophy and um, medals. You don't have to wait till the end of the day. Um, volunteers, um, on Friday, please have the volunteers, and this has been on the sign-up sheet, uh, report to the third floor tower so we can give them their assignments and get them into place. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, the volunteer check-in is the tent behind the grandstands, uh, its usual spot. Um, key to this all the time is that they show up on time. 
uh, so we can get them checked in and to their position. Um, we've adjusted the schedule this year to allow extra time up front for overlapping people coming in and replacing. Um, so we have enough time to get the new people there to relieve a shift if they need to. Um, if for any reason someone cannot make it from your team, please make sure you have a suitable replacement show up in their spot on time. Um, it really helps us keep things running smoothly if we're not running around trying to find um, volunteers. I've been told that we are short on launch drivers for Sunday. Um, so several have asked if coaches or other people qualified uh, through the safety squadron can be drivers and the answer is now yes um, we need to fill those slots obviously if we don't have launches running we don't have racing so we need to fill those last couple slots um, vip tower information uh, right now the weather looks favorable on saturday that we'll have additional uh, tickets available uh, for cash purchase um, Sunday afternoon, the weather looks marginal, so I'm not sure what the regatta committee might do to alter, but at this point, I'm not expecting a, we'll be selling extra tickets for Sunday because of weather concerns. Just remind your um, parents or whoever purchased tickets that uh, they must be present to receive the wristband. Um, we're not just going to hand out wristbands for them to do as they wish. Um, each day, these uh, service desks where they can pick up the wristbands at the uh, base of the stairs will open at approximately 7.30 a.m. Um, pets. Pets, uh, I got several emails. Pets are allowed in the park as long as they are on a fixed length uh, leash. We don't allow for the those adjustable leashes that allow pets to run 20 yards or whatever away from you. Uh, that's not safe in our situation. Uh, pets are not allowed in the tower for whatever reason. So if you need uh, coaches, if you have a brought along your crew dog, and you go to the tower, you need to have someone else watch it while you're in the tower. Um, this year we are switching to alphanumeric bow cards. We used them at the Matt Abel Regatta and we will be continuing to use them throughout the season. Um, this hopefully will alleviate losing or losing track or finding crews, um, getting them in, into their right um, races. So it's important that not only do crews know their lane number, they also know, know the race letter. Um, so that way they can, if they're in this case, letter G, they can find the other letter G boats and sort of stick together. <clears throat> We will be collecting the bow cards when you come back to the dock. Um, if you do not return your bow card, you can expect a $10 replacement fee. Corresponding to the letters, we will have placards up at the crossover point between the warm up side and the race side. Um, at the 2K mark, you'll see a large um, letter which will indicate the next crew that's allowed to cross over. Obviously, if B is up and you are a little bit late in your group A, you should be able to cross over and catch up with your, your group. Um, the traffic pattern basically, and I'll cover this again a second time a little bit later, traffic pattern basically is once the marshal puts up your letter and calls you across approximately 15 minutes prior to your scheduled race time, you move across in front of the 2K start platforms to your lane. Once it looks like we've got everyone lined up, we will ask you to move forward. You'll probably move about 250 meters down, about halfway down to the start line, um, chill there for a little bit, and then they will uh, call you to the, the start platforms um, for your race. Um, if you are late, uh, the start marshal will determine if it's possible for you to uh, go up lane double zero to get to your catch up to your group or not. Um, same place that we're going to have these placards uh, again on the bridge near the bridge area where you cross over between 
the, uh, the past the wave attenuator from the warm up side to the race side. Um, until we open up the course, you'll see a do not enter sign there. Um, we've updated the traffic pattern a little bit. Um, Basically, from here forward, we will be following a clockwise warm up pattern coming down basically straight off the docks um, and coming straight south. You can use there's multiple lanes there, so you can do whatever you need to warm up. You keep where all the the octav you know, octagonal huge beam of buoys are the yellow. Boom I think they're yellow this year. Um, hey, hey, come here, bud. Um, basically that that's going to be in a lane that's basically a crossover lane. It's not a practice lane. When you get down to the south end, depend on depending on your time, this is where you're going to see that large lettered placard right at the the ramp that comes down from the bridge. Um, the opening is no longer under the bridge because of the hurricane. That's that's silted in. It's it's very shallow under the bridge. So you do not cross under the bridge. You're you're actually going to go through an opening between the bridge and the uh, the end of the wave attenuator. It's very wide. Um, so you can either if it, your letter is showing you cross over into your lane. Otherwise, you just make a, a U turn and you go along the wave attenuator back north. You can turn around at any point heading back north. We ask that you go at least to the 500 meter mark um, before you uh, cross over. When you cross over, be sure to look for oncoming traffic so you don't run into it. So if you're real early, obviously you can go all the way up to almost the, the docks again before making another loop. Again, clockwise pattern. Um, and this is for both Friday practice and both days Saturday, once you get onto the race course side, it is one direction only. It is from south to the north end to the bridge and then around the island. Um, because we are probably going to be lacking marshals, we ask that once you come around the island, you go directly back to the dock. Don't wander around this area because we do not have enough marshals for this regatta to keep track for you and your safety. Any questions on the traffic pattern? I think it's fairly simple. Um, I was here for Masters Nationals as a competitor. This is the traffic pattern they used and it worked out very, very well. So um, again, we don't want you bunching up here. If it's not your letter, you can just sort of gradually drift down and then come back around. So um, we do have um, several time trials. I think we've got eight events scheduled for time trials right after lunch on Saturday. Um, so basically with time trials, uh, unless the wind is basically from a western direction all the time, you will be lining up against the wave attenuator and coming through in that gap and then moving over to either lane six or seven depending on whether you're an even or odd bow number and then you will be progressing forward a couple key things here is you do not back down to your stake boat you're always moving forward start line is actually the 100 meter breakage line which gives you about 100 meters between the the platform and the start it's just like a head race start it's a moving start um and we need to be able to get boats in behind you. So you don't want to completely lock off that space. You do need to move forward a little bit so boats can get in behind you. So whether we're coming in from the east side or the west side, basically as the marshal as the marshal tells you to come in, you basically come in, get into your lane, and get ready to go. They will tell you when you're in your lane to go. We will be alternating every 20 seconds. We'll start either one side or the other. So there'll be a, about a 40 second gap between you and the boat behind you. Um, but we will be starting boats about every 20 seconds. So again, not backing down, moving forward. As you're lining up, you want to be in bow order, bow number order. We'll be using head race style bow numbers for uh, these uh, the time trials. 
and those will be issued to you on Friday for pickup. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn the discussion over to our chief referee, Joe Rivario. Good evening, I'm Joe Rivario, and I want to welcome you to the uh, 2013 Sculling Regatta. And as Bryce has said, um, our number one priority is safety, followed by giving you a fair race. Um, and the re referee that's following your race is not there to guide your boat down the course. He's just to ensure that the race is being safely run and being fair. Um, we also want to ensure that that we have good sportsmanship. You know, I know sometimes you get excited and some people yell things out. Well, you need to watch your language because um, if you've gotten a warning for something else and you get another warning be for foul language, you could suddenly find yourself not involved in that race. So make sure that, you know, you, you watch yourselves. Um, I want to touch base on a little bit on, on control, be on time for your launch, know what time your, your event is, make sure that your boats are ready, you know, check your, make sure you have a bow ball, that your ties are tied correctly, the, the proper length. Um, we will be checking that. And if you have to make an adjustment, you're going to have to pull your boat to the side and you're going to have to do that. And I want, don't want you blocking it so that we can get other people launched. So make sure that uh, you also have your oars ready so that when you're ready and you've gotten um, clearance that you go down to the launch dock. There'll be two launch docks um, that we'd be launching from and the, and the referee will direct you to one side or the other. But, you know, don't dally on the on the dock quickly get down there and get on the course and uh, get some practice in. Um, and as that the start will be using two starts, probably uh, for the most part, it'll be a polling start, but depending on the weather and if there's the wind, we may go to a quick start and the, the starter will let you know. Um, they'll give you enough advance notice. They will also, um, once they begin the starting process, we do not recognize hands in the air. Again, the starter is looking at the at the course and looking at all the boats, and we'll give you plenty of time. If if whatever reason you're out there sculling, they'll give you time. They'll tell you to, you know, give your oars back. Um, so follow the uh, starter, and please, coxswains, if you don't know what sculling is, ask your coach. He'll explain it to you. But if the wind is is such that we need to ask you to scull your boat, you need to be able to do that. Um, let's see what I'm also going to Oh, the, the other major thing is objections. If at the end of the race you feel like that you didn't have a fair race, someone encroached on your water, caused you to slow down or whatever, you need to raise your hand at the end. The referee will come over and listen to what your issue or objection is, and then they'll explain what they witness. They will also tell you what the rules of rowing say about the situation and what appropriate action is needed to restore fairness to the race. Now, if you agree with that, that's fine, you know, and then um, and, and if it's an issue between two boats and everyone agrees, the referee will, will raise his flag and the race will be official. But if you don't agree with that, you have an hour, the rowers have an hour, it's not a coach's issue, but the rowers have to do this, is you have an hour to file a written protest and with $50, bring it to the LOC and to the tower and, and we'll handle it at that point. But however, remember is that you cannot object to the start of a race at the end of the race. If you don't feel like you have a fair start, you don't row. And then they'll address what your issues are. And if it's a valid issue, then they'll do a restart. If it's, a, if it's not a valid issue, you can get a warning. And if you've got a prayer warning, you suddenly find yourself out of the race again. So, you know, you just don't stop just for no reason. Um, so if there's any questions, I'll be happy to uh, ask or answer them. But you know, again, we're here to make sure that you have a successful regatta and we want you, we want everyone that's out there to have an opportunity to race and and uh, enjoy themselves. So if you have any questions or we can continue. All right, thank you, Joe. Um, one comment, uh, obviously this is, this is a sculling event. We will not have coxswains. Oh, that's true, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, but it we do, you know, obviously singles cannot 
skull bow round, but doubles and quads can. Again, the bow person can hand their oar to the uh, two seat, um, and then two seat controls their blades with one hand and uses their other hand to skull the bow sideways. Again, um, not sure what the winds are going to be right now. I think they're pr primarily from the south. Um, obviously, weather can change, um, which hopefully will help with alignment. Hopefully we'll have minimal crosswinds, but um, obviously we hope that coaches have um, covered that their teams. Um, if weather does become an issue, um, basically the anybody on the warm up side will be directed back to the docks to go to the docks immediately to uh, land, we will stop launches. So basically all docks will be incoming docks to get everybody off the water as quickly. Um, pretty much anybody on the race side uh, will be directed down the course, depending on the weather conditions, either they will land at the beach if they need an immediate evacuation or row around to, if it's safe to do so, row around the island and, and return to the docks. See what else we got. Um, medical. Um, we'll have medical personnel located both at the launch docks control commission area and also at the finish line. Um, if you are extremely tired at the finish line and lay down, you can expect that someone's going to ask you to sit up or signal that you're okay. So we don't, uh, we know that you're just exhausted and not actually having a medical issue. If you do have a medical issue or you do need assistance, whether it's from a referee for breakage or medical, you know, uh, please let the closest marshal or referee know so that we can address that as quickly as possible. Did you also discuss um, the length of time they have if there's a, a breakage? Um, in the rules, it states the if there is a breakage, we can delay your race up to one hour maximum. So um, if you have a broken oar or a true breakage, that can that's what we can do for you. If you jump a slide or something like that, that is not breakage. So um, you'll probably be penalized for you know, get a warning for that. And then uh, depending on the situation, We'll go from there. So but basically there's a one hour one hour um, window there. Again, a Brett sent out a text about the um, God, I can't think of the name of the application at the moment um, that we can notify you. Hopefully you've given us also your current information um, so that we can try to call you uh, coaching staff um, if we find out there's an issue. A uh, couple other items uh, not on the agenda here. Um, the heat sheets, um, I put all the information, but the new software has a glitch, so hopefully I can get that fixed and get that published. But in the meantime, Regatta Central is open. Several of you asked about being able to make modifications to your lineups. You should be able to do that now without issue. Um, I am missing several teams. I will send out an email again for lodging. Um, part of the reason why we're not increasing and actually decreasing our entry fees is because we have, you know, the board has been able to secure some grants and stuff. But the key to that information is that we know what your lodging is because some of the grant comes from Sarasota County. So um, hopefully you like the lower fees and we'd like to keep it that way, but we need your assistance to make that happen. Any questions before we wrap this up? Yeah, Bryce, just wondering for the time trial, is there going to be any indication of that 100 meter start line or is it just they pass the line, the time's on, they should just expect uh, to be going? Um, well, you're going to see officials close to the shore at that at that point, the timers. Um, I don't know if we'll have any way of otherwise of indicating that breakage zone. Um, if you have not been to the venue recently, you'll know that they are still doing repairs from the hurricane. So um, there may still be gaps in the wave attenuator. 
Um, we still will be using individual floating pods for our start. They they haven't gotten the new start replacement floating start bridge yet. Um, so infrastructure still has issues. Um, so the best I can say is, you know, the. You know, the. The timers in the what would normally be your liner, your judge at start will be about up instead of being right at the start line, you'll see them about 100 meters down on either the way of the attenuator or the shore side, depending on probably which way, which side we're using for uh, the time trials. And I think they'll also be giving a, a sound to let you know that that's the start. Good question, anything else? All right. Um, look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Um, and I hope you have safe travels and good races. Thank you very much. Take care.
Hey guys. <laughs> we run this now. <laughs> we are the leaders of the spirit set of God. I hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Dude, really Wait, I need to turn my camera on. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> Anyone can join right now. Ew. 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 I hate that. women. I, what if they can? I hate <laughs> men. I kicked Piper. Can see what we're doing. Don't kick me out. <laughs> I, I kicked all y'all at least once. <laughs> Not me. I was no, I got in. permanently banned for the it. entire time. <laughs> Jaden, you're the spotlight. Oh, oh yeah. so <laughs> you're the deer. Oh my god. How do I look at myself? Oh my god, that's oh. my wall. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, ew! Get off the stage, Rainy. Rainy is spotlight. <laughs> Who's spotlighting me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what if they could see, like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait. Who left? I kicked her out. That <laughs> <laughs> was me. Jaden. So funny. I'm gonna Ooh, kick I out Anala. Pipe. Pipe is waiting to join. <laughs> okay, Pipe. Don't Pipe. Patty. Pipe is in. Pipe. I'm back. Listen. <laughs> you. You're all mute. You know what? Oh. You know what? Not. You know what? You know what? Hold on. There. I'm. I removed Maddie. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you spot her. Oh. I'm leaving <laughs> now. I'm, this is no. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, they're all gone. <laughs> Jesus. I can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs>